Welcome to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Ain't another place that has got more bomb bass. Rump past your mom, dad's listening to Tomcats. Talking everything that make you sad. We don't want that. We're here to make you smile. Put your mind at ease. Peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. This what we about. Get some weed in now. We'll talk until we can't no more. And then we peace and out. All right, let's go. Penny Bloom Podcast. It's the Penny Bloom Podcast. Penny Bloom Podcast. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome in to the Penny Bloom Podcast. Tis I, Colton Robertson. And this is the Bad Batch, bitches. It's your favorite, most effective group of Star Wars podcasters. Well, more deviant than defective. I am joined by Joseph George. What's up, homie? What's up? And uh, just an important clarification, I am not defective in any way. I am a standout among the group, obviously. Um, this should be common knowledge to uh, most listeners, but just in case you're new, they're not referring to me as... You uh, are Mr. Crosshair. We also got Miles what? motherfucking Buttress. What's up, homie? Oh, uh, you know, happy to be back again. Um, definitely... All of us are defective, not deviant. After <laughs> I don't that know conversation that, uh... that we had, uh, listen. We're I just want to say, I just want to call us out, bro. It ain't even dark out, and we were having that conversation. Bro, yeah, like it, it, it's literally sunny outside right now. If you got it is six p.m. People are eating food right now. Yeah, like uh, dinner, like supper. <laughs> we'll say supper because it sounds if you fucking want nice. Forty minutes of additional content. Go to patreon.com slash Coro Bloom, uh, <laughs> where we were at both least deviant. A solid solid both, 10 to 15 minutes of truly defective conversation. <laughs> but just both deviant and defective, really. Let's be real. And on the screen below me that I can see and you cannot, KBZ, Kyler Barnett, what's up, homie? Let's do it. Let's do it. Bad Batch, episode number two. We got Cut and Run. And, uh, hey. This was solid. I fucked with it. Overall, a good watch. I'm glad I woke up Friday morning, had my had myself a nice little bowl of cereal, some Friday morning cartoons with it. You feel me before work? It was a joy. It was a joy. How did you feel about the episode, Joe? Give me your thoughts. Let me tell you my current thoughts. I believe that the new current main character that we will be following is indeed going to be Omega. Um, I, I think that, uh, she's going to become the focus of the show. She's, she's going to the become Ahsoka. The... Ahsoka to the Clone Wars is Omega to the Bad Batch. The Omega. She's she's right. even... is, is this cool. that hot of a take though? Not really. really I don't not. think so. It's not, I'm not really pulling this one out of any of my bags. I'm just kind of pulling this <laughs> okay, one okay. from the, okay, uh, okay. just uh, the immediate thought of what I got out of the episode. This is a, um, this is a regular brain take, not a not it, a crinkly brain take. Crazy how crinkly. the show that seems rude. The show, <laughs> no, that's a I compliment. Love, I love the uh, the animation style. I want to talk about it again. I think I did last podcast. Oh, definitely, but, you did. But to hit on it more, it's kind of like a uh, like a love death robots sort of animation style where. Mm. It's kind of not the same each episode. The first episode, it was kind of different. The whole mood was different. You know, it was pre-Order 66. Yeah. And, like, the whole style kind of changed this episode. Well, I don't know. I think that's reflective because of Omega. You know, this is her first time off Kamino. This this shit had Mm. to be pretty, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was pretty. Like, this was a beautiful planet for her to first encounter fucking dirt, Mm -hmm. which is... Kind of awesome. And I Yo. like Sand Sand getting a little bit of a redemption, you know? Oh, redemption. I love sand. sand. It gets everywhere. It's ah, coarse. Yeah. Can you believe it? I don't know about this take. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. Like, it. if it was the other way around, it was like, Yo, what is that? That Sand? Oh, fuck oh. is this bullshit? I hate oh. this shit. Then I'd be like, <laughs> all right, yo. That's a good, God, that's I missed those man-made things that i've only walked on ever the fuck is this coarse rough shit getting everywhere god i just want to be on flat 
Smooth ground. <laughs> Miles, give me your thoughts on the episode overall. Uh, g- good episode. Um, definitely made me realize this is not going to be a show in the same vein of the the Marvel shows that we've covered in the past, or even like the Mandalorian, where I want to stay up until you know two o'clock in the, until three o'clock in the morning to finish it every single week. Yeah, love the show, just not not the same level of excitement. Where I Yo, want to stay honestly, up for outside of the outside of the finale, maybe, but I'm I'm gonna be okay no. with you know what going to sleep and watching it the next morning and getting it the next morning and I'll get just as much out of it. And I here's feel. what I'll say: I think that's good. I I would worry if they did it every single fucking show. I would worry that you're getting like to a point where you might get burnt out on it as a fan. You know, like just all these like super tense, high pressure like. You know what I'm trying to get at here? Like, yeah, I do. I do. And I guess you you gotta give us a breather. Suspense and like, you know, this, yeah, not that this can't be suspenseful. It's a hard line to talk about here. Well, and here's the thing. I I think, I also think think there's a certain mood to a, to an animated series. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, a morning watch it's, of an it's animated lighter. series is nostalgic as fuck for me. So I enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A momentous Uh, occasion has happened. uh Um, I use my filter. Uh, for Holy the first shit. time for the first Holy. time ever. Holy fucking shit. Holy I, uh, fucking I shit. refrained from saying something. Kyler Barnett, give me your thoughts. <laughs> oh, sorry. I wasn't prepared. We've been off. I just was banking on getting skipped at this point. Uh, no. <laughs> um, I, I actually like this one a lot. Um, I think for someone who is really late into Clone Wars and slash, um, like just this whole storyline, um, like this was something nice for me because it just seemed so familiar, I guess, because it was so, I guess, you know, recent. Absolutely. Um, so I really like just seeing like characters, you know, that I had seen already. And that, yeah, now... especially in the early seasons of Clone Wars, I think you get cut. Like season two, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. the deserter is an early, early, se- early season episode. So their return to Seleucami so early in the Bad Batch is fucking awesome. I yeah. think it's pretty. I think it's a pretty awesome callback for them to. Know yeah, well, and I think I just liked. I felt like this episode had a lot of callbacks to a lot of different things, and I there's a chance that I'm still wrong on one of the things, but we'll talk about it later in the episode. I'm sure. I, so. I really, I, I can agree with you. Loved all the callbacks. Also hated him at the same time because it meant Joseph was right, and you know that was a, a ne- spot on, actually spot on, and just actually, like a, throughout, like throughout on a whim, like throughout not even, the the like idea. Well, no maybe they're part, gonna go back to the yeah. deserter. Maybe like and even the part like through Rex and everything. Like I got every single detail correct, and I just wanted you to know um, that's only one percent of my true power. So. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Watch out, world. Imagine He's if you got world. all six and finished. Yeah, world. More Wouldn't even help me. That'd bring me up only at like 4%, I'd say. <laughs> let's, uh, let's jump into the scene-by-scene breakdown of the Bad Batch. I've got my usual notes here, and uh, I'll probably run through them more than usual. There's only a few scenes that really warrant, I feel, a ton of discussion, you know. Uh, but, you know, obviously, chime in as you do. As you do. So, we open on the Bad Batch in hyperspace where we see Omega and uh, Wrecker just conked out together in the in the back of the ship. And Hunter and Echo discuss her for a moment, what they're going to do. You know, she's a she's a kid. What the, what are they supposed to do? They're just soldiers, you know. And they arrive to Seleucami. And they get off their ship and Omega is just absolutely fucking floored. She's like, what is this stuff? They're like, it's dirt. <laughs> You fuck with it. And she's like, this is fucking awesome. You know, it's her first time not being on No, Christmas no, and that's what I was going to say. I just think, like, it's so relative to, like, where she's come from. I mean, can you imagine going from Camino, like, living on Camino, this great, oh, rainy, she ain't never rainy the sunshine, bro. lifeless never planet. The sunshine. No, there's no real life there that's, like, relatable to her. You know, let me no, get the perfect analogy. No emotion. She is mm-hmm. lived surrounded by, like, no emotion almost. It's like she... Was an earthbender on Camino. She's surrounded by all water. She can't bend at all. 
But now, is this dirt? I feel it. I can bend it. Ah, oh, it's like it's that's a little nut in itself too. Probably. Is that a, is like, that a does that qualify for a ding? I'd say it's like a fifth of a nut. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I need to stop, dude. Yeah. I feel like that's that's a ring of the bell that we haven't that we haven't mentioned ah. for a while. That boy ah. bad news here, man. That guy, this is that guy not good. He ain't good with issue. But you know, she said the dirt is amazing. She kicks it around, jumps up and down, and they head on through this uh, lovely landscape on the planet Salukami. I thought this was a beautifully animated planet. And uh, Omega continues to be blown away by the uh, the nature's and galaxy's beauty and. They discuss the Bad Batch, discuss the the deserter that they're going to be visiting. And Echo's like, you really trust a deserter? And Tech's like, why not? We are all deserters now, are we not? You know? Dude, I lo- he has so many lines like that in this show already. Where it's well, just because, like, yo. I'm watching, oh, no. I'm watching Community right now. Are you all familiar with Community? A little. Mm-hmm. A little. He is the Abed. Tech oh. is Abed. You know, he's yeah. he's always got the logical fact that's like, this is what we should do. And it, he's, he's most of the time he's fucking right because that's and, what he does. But you know? I love that he's so like monotone and just like business about it that it sounds so sarcastic. Like, yeah, you know what just, I mean? Like it sounds like he's like well, backhanded. It's because he's, he's, he's so much smarter than everybody. And like, yeah. so he is, he's going to be cocky, you know? Right. Bro, I just – okay, to go back just for another second because you mentioned Omega. Omega. Um, you Omega. mentioned – oh, I shouldn't have started that. I'm so sorry. Omega. Omega. Joseph, um, do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Omega. Oh, <laughs> oh no, it hurts. It this hurts. Is the best episode we've ever recorded. This like, is electric. This is electric this right now. This is every uh, minute has been just. Pure I mean, you have to have content. the Patreon exclusive to, to this get is, the full relevance. But this is something. I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, what I was gonna say was, I love that there's almost a uh, like. I don't know. I was kind of getting reminded of like Ray a little bit with Omega, like on mm. this planet when she's seeing all this stuff. Like that obliviousness is like kind of reminds yeah. me of Ray in a sense. When Ray got to Taco Donna and was like, uh, you know, I didn't know there was this much green in the fucking galaxy. You know? Right. She's never seen that shit before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just that think line like, always stuck with me from the sequel trilogy. I always liked that detail a lot. So I just I like, did. It, I don't know. Am I? That ain't no, right. I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you okay, completely. Okay. It's, I, 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 it's I just very need some... that. And you know, Hunter's role to Omega is, I mean, you know, Ray really looked up to Han Solo in the time she got to know her, and that's kind of the the looks that Hunter's given Omega are kind of what I remember from Han giving Ray whenever he's like offering her a job and stuff. He's he like comes to know her, you know, worth as a potential. Asset. So, well, okay, you know? that sounds terrible. I I said asset, but like I meant like asset in a sense, like to the to the team. Yeah, to the cause, to their to whatever they're doing. Maybe it didn't. Maybe I just had a little panic attack right there. My bad. <laughs> I just like to cover my bases sometimes. It's all good. No, I get you. I get you. But you know, they all arrive to the desert to this uh, deserter's home, and uh, they almost stumble on a trip wire. And Wrecker's like, <laughs> fucking one trip wire. Can't fuck with me. And then he trips the laser system, which activates a bunch of droid pop-ups. They they pop up, scare the shit out of Wrecker. He fires on all of them, and he's like, was that me? <laughs> and, you know, we see Cut and Sue. They approach and greet the clones like, look, more clones who have lost their way. Wow. These guys really can't get their shit together. <laughs> Goddamn. Yo, okay, I'm going to... I'm sure Colton, that bare minimum, probably already knows this. But I figured out the other day that the dude who voices Rex, or maybe is is it Rex or Cody or both? He voices this. Uh, he voices all five of the Bad Batch dudes too. Yeah, D. Bradley Baker. Okay, then you. Yeah, I was gonna say there's no way I know this and Colton doesn't because like this yeah, is D. Been Bradley Baker. For, he's always been all the yeah, clones. No, I know. He's that's what I was gonna say. Since the beginning of the Clone yeah, Wars. I know. I figured yeah. that, so that's why I figured you knew it. But I was like, I saw it. Joe, you're my, uh, my. Yeah, they're my, they're clones. Yeah. So like, 
Well, no, I understand, Joseph. It's I just, like, it's so bad match, wild. But still, that's like, so the wild. Bad Batch voices, they all have different voices. Yeah. They, they do not, they sound alike enough for you to know they're clones of each other, but that just shows the voice talent there. Yeah. My, yeah. my, my idiot roommate, whenever, like, at the end as we were watching, like, the, the credits, that guy's na- name came up for all, like, it pretty much just every clone. <laughs> it came up and he's like, whoa, the same guy voices all five of them? I was like, I was like, no shit, dumbass. It's like a Seth MacFarlane, like on Family Guy, almost. <laughs> like, damn, I don't know, Miles, no. tell me That's... how you really feel about me. Shit. God no, no, damn. not you. Because, no, no. I was he like, said it to me I like, was over here like, getting called a fucking dumbass. No, 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 he said it to me not not just like that. These five were all voiced by the same guy because they're like voices are all different. He's like every clone is voiced by the same person. I was like, yeah, they're clones. Like the Bad Batch, I can at least understand like thinking that they might be voiced by different people because they all have different like dialects and shit yeah no nah, yeah, they all have different it, voices it makes sense yeah so like but i'm not the, saying it in the amazement themselves sense, he was yeah but like the fact that he takes that much time and does that much work for the shows is crazy like that's a lot yeah that's so much voice talent yeah like, like a lot of voice work four like five and then every Bruh. other clone's parts bro like my it, man's showing up every day like never scratchy throat my boy is there every day how many times do you think he's in the just water been like, drinking the water he is in that bitch ready he's got to be like affirmative or like open the bay doors you know, he's uh, got to do all those too you know like damn that's that's a lot of work for that's a lot of what is now like of, the eighth season that's a Yo, lot of talk that's a lot of what? talking you know who probably has the best, like, preparation for their, like, moment out of anyone? The narrator for the Clone Wars. Tom Kane. Yes, that dude, dude has that to was just, so like... Good. That was pretty fucking good. good. Oh, my God. Yeah, that dude oh. probably, like, hits a nasty, like, chug of water and hits him with that <clears throat> adjust tie and is, like... Sadly, like, we didn't get that guy this episode. Oh yeah, you right, you right, you right. I, mean, you know, I was trying to, th- I was trying to think about it because Joseph I was mentioned to like think the of animation why I hated this episode, and, I was like, <laughs> and now I know. <laughs> and Joseph mentioned the animation. I was trying to think. I was like, "Fuck, did we get the narrator in this episode?" And I was trying to think. I was like, "I don't remember him saying anything." We didn't get the narrator this episode, so well, I think God, I no wonder why I fucking thing. hated this episode. I want to hear how he would say Omega. Oh, I want to hear that <laughs> Omega on Salukamai. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! Right, I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you to stop. You're too good at that. <laughs> Whoa, Bro, Colton has all of those in his bag. He is nasty. With Bro, I don't know where the fuck you're pulling that out of, but. <laughs> oh my god, what that was like t- that was too good, dude. He's done like at least two impressions, like every show we've recorded, like for the whole season. <laughs> he's done at least two. Like I'm just no, I know, but he does. He does a lot of impressions. Conservatively, like, like conservatively, where? I'm gonna say two a season that are really fucking solid. That's what I'm saying though. That's he does impressive. a couple where I'm like, oh, that's that's good. That's that's a solid impression. That one, I'm like, why the fuck are you that good at it? Like it why sounds like the fucking narrator just like, stopped, it, just stepped into the I'm podcast. The shock. Like, you sound more like the narrator than the narrator sounds like the narrator. <laughs> but, <laughs> yo, <it's, laughs> what, I don't know how it's possible, but it is. That's right, like... Wait, Joseph, can I get an Omega from you just to see if maybe you do it as well as... What, Omega in the annou- yeah. in the narrator voice? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 just Omega in your, in, in your Omega voice. Oh, Omega. Yeah, I think, sorry. <laughs> I like sorry, that more. I think, I think Joseph gotcha. I love, I love, I love Joe's Omega. Omega. He always looks so happy when he says it. It's a, it's a a real smiley word. You can't really, because when you're saying it with a New Zealand accent, you're going to smile. Omega. Omega. (laughs) But, you know, inside uh, the little shack of uh, Cut and Sue, everyone makes their acquaintances catch up. Uh, Cut explains that, you know, Rex had just passed through last week and that he was going on about some behavioral implant. And, there goes Joe being right about shit. <laughs> Just all over the place. But uh, Omega, having worked on the clones and all that shit, he knows that uh, knows that he was talking about that inhibitor chip. You know, and Hunter's like, "Fucking inhibitor chip, Tech. You you said they were programming us, but you didn't say anything about a chip." And Tech again with the dynamite commentary. How the fuck else did you think they were doing stuff, <laughs> dumbass? 
<laughs> I, just, I just love Tech's commentary on everything. He's go, he's always got something to say. But uh, Cut and Sue's kids, uh, Shea and Jack, come bursting in, and they're they're meeting Omega, and it's just precious. Like this shit was so cute, and I love I love that. You know, Mother's Day was just uh, yesterday, actually, and we need more mother stories in Star Wars. We got a lot of these fathers. We get a lot mm-hmm. of these father figure stories, and the moms always die. We got a sharpshooter, boys. Bro. We got a sharpshooter mother. Sharpshooter milf, dare I say? <laughs> is David... Is, Dude, is, the Twi'leks uh, the are the, the, the prettiest of the alien woo! species for me. Hera Syndulla and Rebels is a very, Ooh. very great character. Ooh. Very, very great character. <laughs> very great indeed. I want some more of uh, Hera and her son, you know? Mm. Get a mother mother son story there because yeah. that kid oh, could yeah. grow Shit. up to be a Jedi. She, she is a she is a fucking milf now too. So I would know. follow her career pretty closely, I'd say. But uh, <laughs> how the fuck do you trail off like that? I don't know. Uh, adds but you know, uh, Omega guess. meets the little kids, Shea and Jack, and they're like, "Come on, let's go play." And it's precious the way Omega looks at Hunter and is like, "Can I?" And he give he gives her the little nod, and it's very. It's very reminiscent of you know the sanctuary back on back in the Mandalorian. It's pretty much right, right there, frame for frame. Yeah, kind of the same. What's up, Kyler? What, what you laughing at? <laughs> no, no, can't can't I, discuss. I don't want to snitch on myself, but my friend sent me a tweet that I was looking at, and that shit had me dead as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll send it to you, and uh, well, I don't have Miles on Twitter, but I'll send it to Joseph and Colton at least. Outstanding, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Miles. Go no, ahead. <laughs> but you know, she turns to Hunter for permission, and he gives her that little nod, and uh, outside. The kids all play with that little ball, trying not to drop it. And Hunter leans up and, against the door and like watches them all play. And he's real smitten. And it's like, oh, this is so cute. You're I supposed love to, it. Omega, you're supposed to catch it. Come on, <laughs> Omega. Oh, come on, Omega. Omega's like, why are we playing this? What's the point? <laughs> yeah. What do I do now? I'm Omega. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Omega. <laughs> you say, say, I'm Omega. I remember. And then I out loud went, Omega. Omega. I went, Omega. <laughs> oh, man. Why are we playing this? <laughs> but, I know. am Omega. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, dude, it's for fun. And then, you know, Cut comes over, approaches Hunter, and asks, what's up with the kid? And he explains that she is also a defective clone. And Cut proposes the question of her purpose, you know. The Kaminoans don't create without one. So what's hers? You this all have it. yours. And this was interesting because it does, it does, this is the most ominous line surrounding her potential, you know, like what, why, why did they do this? What is going on, you know? This is Dave Filoni's way of clarifying something, saying that, hey, this character is important. I'm not going to flat out tell you what it is. Mm-hmm. But I'm letting you know, hey, these people don't create without a purpose. Like Omega's here for a purpose. Yeah, and it's just it's like a a uh, a, a literary device. It's like a literary device that just masterminds use in cinema. And Dave Filoni is just a prime example of 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 that, and uh, deserves every single sexual encounter that he ever gets, <laughs> um, and even more, all of them, <laughs> every single one. But. <laughs> No, it, it is it, it, it's something that keeps you in it for for the sake of you know the future of the storyline with Omega. It's like don't don't lose interest in what the mystery surrounding Omega's character was last episode. Like she is still a weird entity. Don't be taken by her cuteness just yet. We still don't know what the fuck's going on. That's true. She's well, a Palpatine I mean, child. Like I'm with Joseph. Goodness, but... She's got to be Palpatine. I'm with Joe. I yeah. mean, it's. It's pretty likely. No. I mean, it, it, it's likely that Palpatine is involved. In I mean, some way. shit. I don't really believe that, but like, fuck. If they can say Ray is fucking related to this man after all this fucking time, who, dude, this is like prime, like time. This would be the prime time to have a fucking child. 
for Palpatine, but I, I, I ain't really fucking with him like that. Though. I mean, would it be a prime time to have a child? <laughs> yes, well, because like, I'm he's not dying saying... and he needs to take the uh, life from yo, something. Listen, listen, Joe sounded kind of nice tonight, boys. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Joe, Joe, you get you get up there enough and Joe starts speaking facts. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it works, man. It's It's as simple as one, two, three, click and... It, once it clicks, I spew in information to you guys. Sometimes a little too much, <laughs> this is so and uh, funny. it's kind of weird. Just... Where, where normally something would stop as it's as simple as one, two, three. He went, it's simple as one, two, three. Click. I start spewing information at you, and then... <laughs> could have used any other word, but he went with spewing information. <laughs> I love Joe, dude. I Sometimes love I let you guys know a little too much that you shouldn't know yet, like as humanity, and uh, I gotta as I gotta, humanity. I gotta slow my roll down. <laughs> you know, Cut tells Hunter that battling droids is much much easier than raising a child, and Hunter says they don't really have a choice. Camino wasn't safe; there was no other option for us, and. He was like, you know, the Empire is a real fucking pain in the ass. And Cut's like, yeah, we got to catch a fucking transport out of here. Like, we got to get off planet. And, you know, Hunter's a good friend. He's like, yo, let us give you a ride. And he's like, bro, y'all are wanted hardcore. I can't I can't take a risk like that. And obviously, I, be seen I appreciate with you, the asshole. understanding here. You can't be seen with the same face as me. <laughs> exactly. Ooh. Exactly. Uh, have you know, I even Hunter thought, have any of them ever thought of just, just, uh, Always taking a just a normal ass clone, you know, uniform, so that they can literally disguise themselves whenever they want and go into anywhere. Good question. Good like, question. Well, they probably at this point though they would probably have to get chain codes. I mean, I guess, but like at least you're not immediately seen. You're like, oh, you look yeah, way true. different. True, um, but they're just that confident, you know. I they guess, can just yeah. Straight Wherever up. they go, they know they can get out of it. Straight up. We're here. Hey, Ed, all right. I, I'm behind that. I like that. I like that. But, you know, Hunter he, Hunter looks back to the children all playing, and Omega celebrates as she's caught the ball. She's like, I caught it! I am Omega. And he, he gives her a little grin there, and it was like, oh, this is so fucking cute. But, you know, Hunter and Cut, they head into town, and Hunter makes a very apt point. Troops should be pulling their forces, not securing a post. The war is over, and this is imperial. You know, they they occupy streets. It's martial law. They're they're gonna they're gonna get you. They're just they're just there, always watching. Damn, nineteen eighty four ass shit. But Straight you know, up. overhead, a ship is flown by, and uh, Cut explains that they've been sh- ceasing ships all week to tag them in the impound uh, dock. Just uh, you know, they gotta they gotta keep track of every ship, and uh, they had uh, back to their shuttle, discussing uh, where the family is going to be headed. Just looking for a nice remote planet, and Cut tells him that if he wants to lay low, he needs to put being a soldier behind him and make himself a new life. Mm. I was like, so they're all this. We're getting some major major similarities between Hunter Omega Mando. Grogu. Like, it's just, like, very... It seems very heavy-handed. Yeah. I was so gonna I'm say that earlier. It seems they get... that they're... That they're going the exact same path of, like, where it's, like, the unwilling, like, he doesn't want to be, the, like, the father figure to her, but then steadily, episode by episode, he's gonna accept it more and more, as we see in this episode, where finally, then he's like, alright, I guess you can come along, just for yeah, a little I, bit. Well, and he, he's learning a hell of a lot faster than Din did, you know? He's... Because... If there's anyone who's more accustomed to the idea of family, it's Hunter. You know, he's got this gang of guys around him that are his brothers. You know, they are his family. Din's never really had that. Obviously, he's had the covet of Mandalorians, but they were pretty much taught, yo, you are, we're all one. Like, you don't give a fuck about what we're doing besides fighting. And Grogu was kind of a pet to Din at first. Kind of. I mean, it's like, it's not like the human to human. I don't know. Maybe that matters. 
I Colton, where is this? Where is all of this that has been recorded over the last five minutes going to end up? Probably Patreon. Damn bad, it, bad, bad, bad. I love that well, the actually, Patreon. I might be able. To, I might be able to keep a little bit of it in. I might just. No, I love it. that our Patreon is essentially just going to operate like fucking Sakar. Like that's just going to be what it is <laughs> for like our just conversations. It's awesome. Fucking sick. God, it's good that some of these conversations are behind a paywall. Thank you. The noise. All right, so. Let's jump back into this episode, but, you know, Cut and Hunter have been talking about how if he wants to make a new life for himself, he has to, you know, move on from being a soldier. He's got to get a new life, but uh, a merchant approaches them, and uh, they are prepared to pay, and she tells them that their credits will do no good without a chain code, a new galactic policy, and they then see that they are not just tagging ships, but tagging people by making their credits worthless without a chain code. So, Joe, I can't hear you. Okay, this is what I don't understand. Order 66 happens. Gotcha. Dude, figure out your fucking mic. I knew that. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Order 66 happens. Then, so now it is, the, the Empire is taking place, and only, yeah. and only Empire credits will be accepted now. Right. You BC also need you also need a chain code. So from day one, from second one, a merchant cannot accept any currency that was worth, you know, what, what it was that's, to them. That's the, the imperialness second. of it. It's Dude, like isn't that insane? If you want to spend your money here, if you want to live, you have got yeah. to register under our under our shit. You have to get a social security number. Like, this poor merchant was just like, dude, like, I can't even take your money. Like, you got to go get a chain code. I mean, you got to fucking go to the DMV. It's going to suck. It's like eight hours, dude. I wonder, so. yeah, maybe it's one of those things where it's like you get one exchange. Like, you get – you come in with your chain code and all of your current credits, and you swap them all out. And maybe mm. that's why she's like, I've already exchanged all my shit, so mm. I'm not taking any of your shit to try and exchange because I can't. So go yeah. ahead and exchange your shit, and then you can pay me. I'm not Bear. messing with that. I'm not taking the risk with those with those filthy republic dollars, bro. I just want to. I want this, some. Bro. I want some high quality imperial dollars, mm. bro. Mm. I fucking love. I don't know what it is about. This doesn't necessarily have to pertain with anything you guys are talking about. It's about bad bad though. Before you okay, get go. mad at me, <laughs> before I get scolded, okay. I fucking love like a good old like grungy market on a space planet, like just a fucking like. <laughs> Hub of like market, bro. Plan. I love that look on just dude. Think about it, like the planet uh, nowhere, like yeah. that kind of vibe, like nowhere. Uh, where I had it wrote down, fucking Phantom Menace, and then also um in the Force Awakens with on like Ray's planet, bro. Just like all of that. Give me all yeah. of that. I or it. it actually reminded me. This planet reminded me of what I envisioned for. When I was reading the Ahsoka novel, where she was holed up, like this was roughly what I pictured in my head for some reason. Yeah, what their, what their area so, was like, dude. Tyler, or even Mandalorian. Tyler. There was an episode with uh, Cara Dune. I don't know where that was. I can't remember, but it Tyler, was just because I'm a little curious. Because you said a, a, a space planet with a market. What other kind of planets would we be visiting? I meant like not our planet, but uh, like freaking Alderaan. That's not even there anymore. So no market, no planet. Let's go. I mean, it's still a blue ball. Or all right, you got me. All water planets, or all freaking ice planets, or there's still space planets though. He didn't say desert planets. He just said space planets. I don't know. Maybe a star. Maybe a moon. Ooh, maybe a moon. <laughs> but you know, back. Back at the shack, <laughs> back at the shack, Omega and the other kids continue playing. When uh, you know, she sees, she seems to purposefully throw this ball past the fence. Like yeah, it looked very, very intentional. Very strange to me. Here. Like it could have been just been a really it. bad throw, but damn, like you missed bad. I, mean, it was I, think, she, I think she wants attention. <laughs> <laughs> I think She's she crazy. wants to explore. I think that's all. No, no. Oh, I, no, was was I was only joking. I was only joking. That was oh. a bad throw. She okay. She knows her way around a rifle, but can't throw a ball straight. Yeah, right, <laughs> dude. 
Yeah, yeah. she knew what she was You're going to argue gonna have... that she has the force after that shit throw? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. No. She volunteers to go get the uh, to go get that ball, and the other kids warn against it. It's past the fence, but Omega's like, don't worry about it. I got this shit. And uh, she don't runs worry. past the fence. Don't worry. I'm fucking Omega. <laughs> Can you imagine two kids you've never met before, and you're on this mysterious planet. You've never even seen dirt before. They say, oh, it's past the fence. We can't go get that. Like, they didn't even think – they didn't – you know, it was just agree. They they agreed to the fact, like, oh, it's past the fence. We can't do that. Like, we cannot go out there. And they walked inside. They're like, days over. Like, accepted. And then Omega's all over here like, yeah, I'll go out there. Do you know who, do you know who the fuck I am? I'll I'm, go get it. I am I'm Omega. I'm Omega. Yeah. Yeah. Omega. Omega does what she wants, frankly. But, uh, you know, she runs past the fence and is caught in the sights of uh, quite the large, scary creature. And uh, it looks like it could easily devour Omega. And uh, inside, the grown-ups are discussing their plan to gain travel privileges. Uh, when Shea and Jack burst in, yelling that Omega has crossed the fence and needs help. And Hunter springs into, re- springs into action, runs out to her. He stands in front of Omega with a knife, ready to fight this thing. This who, animal for Who? Bring her in! And uh, Sue, Sue is just firing on it. Really Bring doing most of the damage. Yeah. Yeah. Really scaring that thing off. And uh, once they're safe, Hunter begins to scold Omega. Like, what were you doing? You know you could have died. And, you know, it's the way a leader of soldiers would treat someone for making a pretty dumb decision. And cut, gives him a little lesson in parenting, live and in action. He, mm. You know, he comforts Omega. He's like, are you okay? Are you hurt? You're safe now. It'll be all right. And he, you know, he tells Hunter, she's not a soldier. And I appreciate that line. And, you know, Cut lifts her, carries her back to the ship. And Wrecker, with the rest of the Bad Batch looking a little concerned, Wrecker goes, hey, kid, are you all right? Like, bro, I just love how these clones are like, you know, uh, clones like supposed to be emotionless but like yet we still see some like these one like obviously the bad batch but there's still other clones that have like shown like you know oh, no, some like compassion that's, that's emotion the point of the clone wars is to show yeah. that they are they are very very they're people people they are people yeah. yeah but like i just love the way the bad batch and like especially like cut with a family now like just how like gentle how human and, like, they kind are of, yeah, yeah it's just yeah that's um, oh, also, Colton, ever since you said fucking Omega sounds like goddamn Korg, I can't fucking unhear it or unsee Taika Waititi every time she's on screen. Omega? I just imagine him in the oh, booth I, just being oh, a, Omega. I just can't, oh, I just imagine him in the booth just being oh, a crackhead. Just, criminal. Boy, I'm Korg. Join Pile of Rock Safe. Yeah. Criminal. Huh? criminal. This is me. Uh, I do have to say, two though. Two for two tonight. You guys had almost convinced me. That, that maybe, just maybe, Omega w- had some force connection. This f- scene with the, you know, cat monster thingy makes me convinced she just doesn't have the force at all. Cause she just was getting straight bitched by this thing and had no clue what was going on. Actually, and someone with the force should just, should be able to know that there's a giant fucking cat nah, about nah, to, nah, about nah. to rip your throat out. Actually, I think she pulled the good old classic, like, I'm going to fake drown so the hot lifeguard can come out and give me CPR. Dude. She, just, she did that with the mom. Cut. Cut. Okay, mom okay. You, so you're saying it with the mom. I thought you were saying that with fucking Hunter. I was like, all right, no, let's no, go ahead no, 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 and, no, no, let's go ahead no, no, and cool mom, it there. mom, dude. Pixar mom. Built like a Pixar mom. Oh, my God. Bro. In a sharpshooter. Oh, my God. John, fuck Sue. <laughs> I mean, do not. I mean. Uh. <laughs> okay, also, another thing, I already kind of talked to this, uh, I talked about this in the group chat a couple days ago when I watched the first time. Is that the same animal from Phant- or not Phantom, Attack of the Clones in the Coliseum that, like, it attacks looks a lot like it. it looks super similar. If it, I'm going to look up a picture. I don't think it is. I don't think uh, it's too far off anyway, but... It can't it's, be. I... It looks. Oh like no, it. dude! That is it. That is the same fucking animal. Really? That has to yeah. be. Yeah, I, no I, way. Think, I think it is. Ain't no fucking way. It's not. It looks the exact goddamn same. All right, then I'm with it's it. Called, okay, no it's called. There's no reason called a Nexu. It's called a Nexu. Let's look. Hang on. I'm looking on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. 
it's a cool look. It was very cool in animation. Like that was a that was a gnarly looking animal. Okay. Oh, it's appeared. It's appeared in uh, Battlefront Two. That's kind of sick. No, it's appeared no. in the Clone Wars multiple times. Oh, mentioned picture, picture. Mentioned, mentioned. Oh, it isn't cut and run. Let's go. I go, saw baby. something. I saw something. There you go, buddy. I'm proud of you. But you know, Wrecker's like, "Hey, kid, you all right?" And Cut assures him that Omega's going to be fine. And as they head back, Tex says things that I mean, like all considered, things could have gone much worse. <laughs> and he's, he's right. They they ultimately could have gone worse. She could have died. She's pretty shook up, and Hunter is already back on mission, he asks. And I think the reason he's already back on mission, he quickly, quickly goes, all right, Tech, can you get us chain codes? And Tech's like, oh, I've only just learned of them, but yes, I can do that. (laughs) And I think the reason Hunter was immediately like, okay, this is what I have to do. I'm leaving him with cut. I'm leaving her with cut and sue. We need to get those chain codes so she can go with them. I think that was officially what made him go, yep, this is what we need to do. But... Uh, he tells them that they need to do that so they can get cut Sue and the kids on that shuttle. And uh, back in the ship, Omega sits in a window where she can uh, see this whole beautiful planet, Seleucami. And she removes the headdress she's been wearing, the little thing on her forehead, which I think is like a Kaminoan thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like and a she... – you think it's like a name tag or, or like a I, – I can't really tell, but, you know, she, she rocks that thing. She looks at it and she kind of cries, you know? She misses and, her mama. Yeah, I was saying. I was thinking she does. She not only misses Camino, but it's also like a missing of like when things were not bad, mm-hmm. when things were not being ruled by the Empire, when we didn't have to sneak around, when or just when, when shit was fine, you know, yeah. or she's relatively never been fine. anywhere at all ever. And then now mm-hmm. she's you know somewhere in a dangerous situation, like that, you know, you think your first time somewhere on another planet would be you know, a vacation of sorts, not can a I just, freaking battle. Can I just say, though, she pulled that thing off, and she looked like fucking Ellen DeGeneres. That's true. And that I, true. I was not, I was so not about it. She looked, no reason. She, she looked, looked fucking different. weird with it off. I like, I, it, 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 she just had messy hair, you know? I like her hair, I like her hair pulled back like that. I think it's a cool character design and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, she gotta keep that on. I don't know. It's, it's pretty, uh, I, I I think it's a good little character piece though. Like that's what makes her yeah. her like the way Echo and I mean the way Hunter's got the fucking skull She's on half skull. his face. I hope I hope that's that what she connects her to the that force. Built into a lightsaber in some way. I think that would be dope, dope as AF. But you know, outside the ship, Hunter and Sue discuss Omega's hijinks, and she lets him know that children will always find ways to get in trouble, but it's their job to protect them, and. Cut approaches and Hunter tells him what that uh, he was right. Omega is not a soldier, and when they leave Salukamai, he wants Omega to go with them. She needs a family, not a battalion. And uh, they ask him if he's sure, and he he confirms. You know, this is what she needs. It's not what he wants. He doesn't say this is what I want. He says this is what she needs. And I liked that. I liked that distinction because Sue even asks, "Are you sure that's what you want?" Make sure it's not. He's, he's like, yeah, sure. It's. I want her to be around, but she literally can't. You know. Yeah. Neko and Tech on the ship discuss the idea of chain codes. Echo noting that it, it's funny clones wanted names instead of numbers, and now the Empire is registering every person under a number. <laughs> and I was like, that's a that's a very specific irony, you know. And Tech notes that it's genius, giving you the ability to identify everybody in the galaxy. It's interesting to see Tech's logical perspective from it. You know, it's like, honestly, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It would be really helpful, you know. Like, it would be really helpful. Just it, Yeah, day. to an extent. As long as it wasn't linked to your ability to, you know, live. True. Yeah, that would suck. But if it was just like a... I mean... What what do people in the United what would someone in the United States without a social security number be able to do? Well, I guess you could still uh I was thinking more along the lines of like your number would just be like, yo, I'm buying this coffee, here's my number, like that's me. 
like out of yeah. Home. I mean, you can still at least buy stuff. Like you can still have money and use money without a social security number. Yeah, but I was just in this case, you can't do shit without a social without their social sure. security number. Yeah, I guess it would kind of suck. I don't know. I take my my statement back. Okay. They they discuss the plan, Echo and Tech, for what they're going to do to get those discs made. And uh, ultimately it requires them getting their ship impounded and into an Imperial facility uh, so that they can get access to the Empire's codes and alter them and stuff for what they need. And uh, Echo says that if they think it's abandoned, that just might work. And Omega looks from her seat... Not Guess saying who's anything. on the ship? Guess she's who's like, on the ship? It's she's like, Mickey. She's just like, fuck it, man. I'm I'm here for the ride. Let's see what let's see what happens. And uh you know, they report themselves to the proper authorities, and we cut to Hunter yelling and in, yelling into his comm. You did what? What the fuck? And you know, he watches yeah. as, their, as their ship gets impounded and they're like, What's the big deal? And he informs them, you know, Omega's on the ship. It's a pretty big problem that you've got here. And they turn to see Omega, and she's like, "Why, guys? I think it's a pretty good plan." I love that they don't they don't give him a heads up or anything. They like they don't be like, "Hey, by the way, we're thinking about doing this." They're just like, "Yeah, we uh, we're we're impounding the ship right now. What's up?" I thought that was mad interesting too, and it just gives you an insight into how fuck it, let's do this. The bad batch is like, it's just yeah. like they are about that action, boss. They are about that action. They're just about getting it about done. That, that, that. If you if there's a way to get it done, get her done. Yo, can I just say that I will fucking absolutely sign up and love to see, like, this transition from, like, the fall of, like, one, like, power slash, like, you know, like... Government? You know, yeah, in Star Wars, t- and to the transition of another, like, every fucking time. Yeah, I the fucking Mandalorian, love this shit. the Empire to the Solo, New Republic. Like, I think of Solo too. even, like, just that vibe, like, of, like, having to go through so much, like... Security you know, and shit. Yeah, just that, all of that. I fucking love that shit. I don't know why. It's a very, like, small thing to, like, really love to see. But, like, I think it's always interesting and makes for, like, really Well, in the Star Wars universe, it's extremely prevalent, you know? Like, even even the sequel trilogy is the fall of the New Republic and the rise of the First Order, you know? It's it's still a transition. And what what's kind of a shame in the sequel trilogy is we... We don't get as much of that government uh, toppling type thing. We yeah, like we straight up see in the Force Awakens the entire New Republic get destroyed, and that's everything you see about the New Republic. That's it. You watch all the planets get destroyed. Like <laughs> it's all right. So filling filling the gap in between is pretty pretty crucial for me. I would like to see like, and that's what I like about this era they're going to usher in with you know Rangers of the New Republic, Ahsoka, the Mandalorian, Book of Boba. Like it's. That's the new republic. That's the era we're getting. So I do appreciate these these in betweeners, and the rise of the empire is certainly a very fun time to yeah to explore with the Bad Batch and Solo. I would love to see them continue Solo too in some way. Oh, what's the time period called where it's cool and it's like back? You know, whenever like Age of the Republic. Yeah, I think so. Like. Raven and like, like oh, all the, high Republic. Age, the old Republic, High Republic, or High, high Republic. Republic or Old Republic, Old Republic, yeah. Depending like, on, oh, I just dude, want, I just want. All I can of just that. tell by Joseph's just state and just the way he answered that he would have said yes to any answer you guys put out probably. there. Yeah, you could have said dildo math, and I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> dildo math, yeah, valid, valid, yeah, valid. That's, that's it. That's the one. But, but uh, yo, you got me. I want that content. Like, I want that time period. The, the dildo, dildo math? math republic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Sweet. Sounds like fun. <laughs> Back at the uh, Imperial facility, you know, clone troopers impound the ship, uh, clamp that shit to the ground, and uh, they board and discuss the kind of ship they're dealing with. You know, they're they're looking at it. They're like, well, this is this is a fucking mess. And what we're learning is the Bad Batch is a straight up group of dudes who is disgusting. Yeah. They just leave a mess everywhere they are, you know. Uh, but they exit and Echo Tech and Omega come down from their little hiding place. And Omega asks how she can how she can help here and echo's like you know you've had enough action for today we'll we'll get this you can go ahead and chill and tech informs echo of what he needs to do and echo gets right on it no time to waste you know making his way through the imperial facility finds his way to a a, to a little port where he can plug in tech's like no wait there's going to be a safe plug into that 
plugs into the safe and look at that. Voila, we got some chain codes. We got some discs. And uh, he makes his escape back to the ship successfully and Tech begins his little uh, his magic on the encryption of the uh, of the chain codes. And Sue, Cut, Wrecker, and Hunter and the kids, uh, they make their way to the transport and the kids are real freaked out by the martial law being implemented. And uh, Hunter tells them to hurry. And Tech tells him, you know, that it'll be no time before he slips through security and delivers the discs. But, you know, Echo and Tech hear something coming from the front of the ship. And uh, they drop the discs to see what's happening. And Omega's like, I'm on it, boss. Let me get this shit. But it turns out what they're seeing at the front of the ship is the conclusion that they can't act on the plan that they just formulated in front of Omega. However, Omega does not know that they have discovered they cannot continue with this plan. <laughs> so she just goes ahead and leaves with the discs no. No, I think she knows that they've decided, like, oh, we have to come up with a new plan. I think she just decides, fuck it, I'm just gonna go do some shit. Oh, you think you think she was she wasn't already gone? She was around to hear it. No, like I think she, I think she heard them saying, like, oh, fuck, there are a bunch of people out there, and she was like, fuck that noise, I'm just gonna go do it myself. I'm a nigga. <laughs> yeah, freaking, I'm a nigga. Do what I want, nigga. I got this. Shit, I took bro. on that fucking big cat. Who the fuck are these stormtroopers to do some shit? <laughs> I threw a ball over a fence. What did you do today? You know? <laughs> oh. But, you know, they, they see Omega running through, and they're like, well, shit. And uh, back in the line for the transport, Hunter is informed that Omega has ran off on her own to deliver the chain codes. And I love that as soon as this news comes through the, the comm, mm. Wrecker goes, I'm on it. And he, he, yeah. he immediately it's... bolts. like he And Wrecker in the fucking hat. Wrecker in the big hat. My favorite, mm, my favorite. That's good. Okay. That had that was shit right there. That but, was it. Was a cute moment. It was a cute. She, uh, she's on her own. She's and then record dropped everything he was doing. He was like, I'm on it. I'm going. I love that he's like just this big brother. You know, mm-hmm. Hunter's like a Hunter's like the dad figure, and Wrecker's like a clear big brother <laughs> figure. And I love that. It's cute. Oh, he's like a oh, teddy bear because he has like a little <laughs> teddy bear, little foot thing too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Sue, you know being the wit that she is i told you kids always find trouble i love i like sue she's a fun character and i i hope we can get some more of cut and sue frankly i like Me them. too i like their family they're a cute they have a cute little dynamic but uh yeah they do <laughs> back at the ship Lucky clone. back at a uh, back of the ship echo is attempting to you know remove the boot from the ship and uh he's nearly caught by a stormtrooper when tech comes and knocks that guy the fuck out and uh this creates a you know, necessary distractions so that Omega can slip right through unnoticed by these, uh, by these stormtroopers until she stumbles upon an R2 unit. And, uh, it's not happy to see her. It screams as we have heard R2D2 do before. It was nice to hear that, by the way. I, I like, I like the R2 unit squeal. It it's was, I just, it was, I nice hated that it was in that context uh-huh. though. Like, damn. it was an Imperial R2. Bro, I ain't never seen that shit get used for bad. Like, I'm only used to seeing that for good. <laughs> but like, you close your eyes and be like, Ah, that takes me back. Ah. But you know, Omega's like, "Yo, shut the fuck up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up!" And Wrecker smashes that shit, and he's like, "Fuck, that feels good!" And again, Wrecker in the big hat. Uh, Omega runs off for the transport line. Omega's like, uh, or Wrecker's like, "I got this shit. Go on." And uh, these clones approach him, and they're like, "Show me your chain code." And he holds out one hand. He's like, "Oh." Oh, it's not in that one. And he holds out his other. He's like, oh shit, I guess. It's... And then he, he, cla- he claps all three of their heads together. Absolute baller triple kill, dude. Absolute the baller triple slam dunk. Out. Mm. And uh, mm. back in the line, you know, Cut is panicking a little more. And Hunter is trying to calm him down. And, but as the clones get closer, Cut's done. He decides they need to find another way out. This shit is taking too long. We can't do this. I'm going to get caught. Uh, perfect timing though, because Omega is here. I'm Omega. She's got, she's got the uh, she, oh, I'm here, and uh, <laughs> she's like, Tech accidentally made five discs instead of four, and cuts like, Yo, dude, you didn't tell her that she's coming with us. Oof, you're just gonna send her with us out of nowhere. Yeah, and Hunter kneels works. down to Omega. The others move on, and he tells her that she's she's leaving with Cut and Sue. And uh, she questions if she did something wrong. And he tells her that she needs a family of good people who will give her a life that she deserves. And she's like, but I want to stay with you. 
And I was like, fuck. That shit hurt him. This is what Grogu would have been saying if he could talk oh, in Sanctuary. No, Grogu's no, would have been so much worse. Oh, God. Mind. But I want to stay with you. Oh, God. It was just adorable. I loved it. But he tells her that she has to go. It's for her own good. And he kind of gives her a little nudge on the shoulder towards Cut and Sue. And uh, Omega turns away, extraordinarily distraught. And Cut places the discs at the Imperial's feet. And they get scanned through. They're cool. And as soon as Hunter sees this and he gets called, he heads for the fight. And Omega watches him run off. And Sue asks if she's ready. We don't get an answer here. And we'll get one in a second. Which I'm glad. I was like, I know, I know she wasn't gonna go with them, but I thought she could, and then we'd see them meet up again, which I would have liked too because I would like to get more cut and sue. But like, I'd prefer that Omega and Hunter stay together right now. I like mm-hmm. them a lot. It's a fun little family, dude. Uh, can someone like explain to me why are Mando and Hunter like have no experience with like? being a fucking father and they're absolutely killing the game, just making it up as they go along. <laughs> well, Hunter, uh, Hunter, even more than Dan, I think, like, I, like I said earlier, he's just becoming a, well, Mando, I guess had a good background with like fucking, you know, uh, the main foundlings. and yeah, foundlings and shit. So think I guess he had it, a good man. background for like his own, like moral compass and like how to be this and that. And like, Oh, I mean, think about it. Killing a child is wrong. Their yeah. DNA, their DNA, eventually, you know, the dude that it came from eventually became a father. I mean, you, he, you know, he maybe have worked for the wrong people, but he was still a good father. So in the Jango other- Fett, that that is true. He specifically wanted to be a father. Do so, all clones mm-hmm. have an inclination towards wanting to be a father? Wow, that is wild to think about. That would be interesting. You know. Joseph, you said he was a good father. I don't know if I'd necessarily go that far. He wasn't a terrible father, but I don't know that he'd say that he'd say that he was a. He did train his son to, you know, become an assassin. Like, him. yeah, that's just what they did, did. Though he did kind of Bruce Wayne, Robin him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What you're are you freaking Batman? Do? You have a kid? You're just gonna let him be a little loser, little baby child? No. Well, what are you gonna do, Batman? Oh, that was terrible. Oh, yeah. See, now I feel even worse about it. Like, fuck this guy. Fuck this guy. Three for three. Listen, Colton, we get it. You're better than us. (laughs) (laughs) Not true. I love you guys. But Wrecker and Tech continue the battle with the uh, troopers pushing down on their position. And uh, luckily, Hunter's ready. And uh, boy, oh boy, does he fuck on this entire wave of troopers that they can't seem to handle. Mm. Uh, he's he's really ready for a fight after saying bye to Omega. Like he's 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 here to kick some ass and get the fuck off this planet. But uh, you know, he takes out one wave, but then another comes from behind, and he he gets to cover. And Echo's like, dude, I can't get this fucking clamp off. They set Wrecker on it. He gets that shit off pretty nice and easy. Just rips that shit out of the ground. That was kind uh, of insane. Break- yeah, yeah, like that man's that man's wild. He's like nasty. Top he's ten strong. anime like strength moments, probably yeah, top he's, ten. He's elite. He's elite. But they break for the ship, and Wrecker says, "Wait, Omega's not back." And I was like, "Fuck!" Hunter didn't oh. tell any of them. Yeah, it's yes. a rough look. Like Hunter made this decision on his own. God, I can't imagine the reaction we would have gotten from Wrecker. Okay. Okay, mm. okay, but think Rick about it. Okay, 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 yes, sucks, but understand why. Think about, like, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with Rocket when he gets on the ship on Ego, and everybody's like, Where, where's Quill? And then he shoots frickin' Gamora. I can't lose another friend today. Yes, dude, I mean, like, think about that kind of thing. Like, I mean, not the same exact, like, you know, like... The because, sentiment, though, I get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. He's I like, mean, we just lost Crosshair. Are you going to tell me? I get it a little bit. I don't want to oh, see the shot. Yeah, I get it. I get it for sure. But, you know, uh, Hunter's ready to tell him right here and then that Omega's not coming. But perfect timing again. Omega shows up. Wait for me! 
and uh, she tries to run to them, but is grabbed by a clone at her at her ankles. And uh, Hunter goes after her and ultimately rescues her, shooting off like three Dude. or four clones all at once. Bob Dude, Hun- Hunter, fuck yeah! I was about to say Hunter went sicko mode this episode. My Yo, dude, yeah, he popped off, off when he, he needed went to. nuts. I, I think, and it's because of that parental instinct, man. He's ready to, he's ready to protect his dude. You know? Like, no, nah, he went Kobe in the forest, bro. Like, he went off. That that he was he got, a, he got a chopper gunner or AC one thirty inbound coming next round, boys. <laughs> I mean, <like laughs> but uh, back at the transport, cut is stopped by a clone, and uh, he's like. Wait, you look like, and then they're called to reinforcements. So he's like, "All right, go ahead." But like, Cut almost got caught right here Wait at the last minute. moment. Even Wait after a you look a lot like I look like. Exactly. You look like You're... me, but with just with some different hair and a funny hat. I <laughs> look like me, and you look Weird. like me. Weird with what? the other. The, the other... clone force creates one last distraction to save yeah. Cut and Sue and their family, which I yeah. thought was nice, mm-hmm. and. uh their way through. They board the ship safely and they take off and Hunter and uh Wrecker watch their ship take off as they let Omega get on the ship first. And uh they board their own ship and fly away, you know? And in space, Tech and Echo pilot. Wrecker's doing some bicep curls with a gonk droid. Just getting big. Doing wow. his thing. And uh Omega goes to uh have a chat with Hunter. She tells him that she knows she fucked up and that she knows she has a lot to learn. But they don't have to get rid of her, you know? This is where she wants to be. I chose to be here. I left Camino with you. And Hunter's like, hey, you know, I guess I have a lot to learn, too. Mm. And if this is where you want to be, then this is where you'll stay. Absolute like, tear jerker. Bro, that was a good ending line, too. Yeah. That little shot of them bathed in the light from the, the mm. hollow net. It was, it was just very, very... And then she, off camera, she says, "Also, if you ever try and get me get rid of me again, I'll kill you myself." <laughs> Bro, oh my god! Why are the animated shows so good about these like mentor slash like role model oh, like dude, relationships? Shane and they Ezra fucking is kill top it. Tier. They kill it. They kill it. And it can be top tier. Yes, they've never fucking missed. All hits, no misses. It's impeccable, and like they don't fucking miss. That I know. I know. This miss. isn't a Rebels podcast. We're talking about the Bad Batch, but. They're creating this family dynamic that the only other place I've really felt it in Star Wars is Rebels. You know, like Kanan, Hera, Sabine, Zeb, and Ezra, along with Chopper, are just like, they're a very tight knit and by tight knit and very close family. You know, like that's, you want them together. It's very, it's very cute by the end of it that. Like, they formed a genuine family, and I feel like that's the direction the Bad Batch is headed with Omega being, like, a daughter figure. Mm. It's being, like, my, like, uh, three men and a baby, but it's five clones and Omega. Four clones. Four clones, yes. Four clones. You want to know what would be... It's like Chuck and Larry. What if Omega, her purpose was that she's a shapeshifter, and uh, she's currently a little girl acting all innocent... And that's why she knows how to use a rifle so well. Maybe she knows about these inhibitor chips, you know. What if she, like, isn't actually, like, an adult and it's going to be, like, she's on a secret mission right now or something like that. That's a pretty wild take. But, you know, you never know. These other guys do have some pretty some pretty out-there abilities. We've never seen something like shape-shifting in the Star yeah. Wars universe. That was well, really yeah, we a have. direction. Yes, we have. The have one we? of the bounty... One of the bounty hunters. Oh and, yeah, uh, an attack of the clones. Yeah, that is a big. T- that is definitely a shapeshifter. I'm tripping. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, but what was her I, name? I don't Wait, remember. She's the one that they you sent. Think she was a shapeshifter. Yeah, that she was the one that they sent after Padme. Padme. Yeah, and then no, but she got shot with the dart, and that's why she. Changed. Okay, well, yeah. No, the she's, no she's a shapeshifter. A bug. But no, then she the got shot by the dart and then she to go send a bug to go kill Padme. Yeah. She's a shapeshifter, but she got shot by the dart, and that's what mm-hmm. caused her to change back into her like normal form. I thought she just like fucking did like Palpatine just, ordered Dooku to kill like, Padme. Dooku ordered on, Maul to kill Basically, Padme. Like, I thought that thing like just sucked the life out Dude, of her. Dude, do you know the line Damn of people? Cool. Do you know the line of people that it took to kill Padme? Palpatine, I don't think Dooku Oh yeah, Dooku did order. Palpatine all, yeah. ordered Padme dead. By telling it to Dooku. Dooku ordered Maul to kill Padme. Dooku ordered uh, Jango or Boba to go kill Padme. Boba, or no, it would be Jango at that time. 
She is a shapeshifter, by the way. Zam Wessel yeah. is for sure a shapeshifter. Yeah. And then the shapeshifter was, you know, bounty to go kill Padme. And then the shapeshifter sent a dr- drone, and then the drone sent a bug. Two bugs. True. That went through a little circle in, in glass. Yeah, that's a lot. Padme. It takes a lot to kill a senator, though. Wow. I'm assuming. Nah. I mean, shit, if you think about it, she would have had, she would have got got. If it weren't for somebody standing in her place, which I guess is yeah. because they knew at the, beginning, at the very beginning of Attack of the Clones, she would have been God if she didn't have her handmaidens, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, and then even there, she would have gotten and, God if uh, and if her and Anakin weren't banging. End credits, bro. Well, she if, if Padme got gets God. waxed, if Padme oh. is in that spot, she's waxed, and that's end credits. No more Star Wars. Padme is no more Star Wars because Anakin never grows that attachment to her. Well, I mean, he okay. loses it, but I maybe that swirls in more. Into, oh, wait, no, but that all star. I want to have this discussion. <sighs> yep, who right. killed? Who killed Padme? Palpatine or Anakin? I don't think. I Anakin, I don't know why. I've never read more into that line. That she died. Just because she so lost Palpatine, the yeah, broken scoops heart. up Anakin. No, yeah, Palpatine scoops up Anakin. Obi Wan took Padme. Palpatine has zero clue on how Padme is doing, but she gave birth, and then the robot says, "Like it looks like the life was just taken out of her." Like the robot literally says something like, that. "We're losing her, but we can't explain." No, it. she just lost or the something will to like live, that. Joseph, she lost the will to live out of nowhere. You know, out Not of out nowhere. of nowhere. She yeah. had a broken she heart, heart Joseph. Joseph. Because Palpatine took Padme's life no. force to keep Anakin alive. 100%. No. 100%. Why would he have to take Padme's, though? Ooh. Because, nah, he, nah. because it would enrage him even more to be the guy that Palpatine just, wanted him to be. Oh, I guess, he would, I, I guess he would want. I guess he would want Padme dead. Why am I giving? Why am I giving in? To this? Yeah. it's a win-win for Palpatine. It's a win-win. I'm going to take Padme's Wait. life to save Anakin, in which killing Padme will send Anakin on the murderous wrath that I want him to go on. Joseph, I'm just going to say one thing real quick. Response to this: You thought Hayward was Ultron, so. I'm still right, so maybe not wrong. We're end on that note. <laughs> this was the Penny Bloom podcast. It was the Bad Batch Bitches. I was Colton Robertson. I was joined by Joseph George. Thank you very much, buddy. I'm sorry uh, for today, boys. This is a real, <laughs> no, this was a no real duct this was tape a it one. together episode, you know, just kind of put whatever, whatever. But, this was uh, a fun one. I liked it a lot. It was, it was a lot of fun. But um, also, thank you to... Miles, my fucking buttress. You know, anytime, man. Anytime. Next week, even? Perhaps, Maybe. even? Probably. Maybe. Probably. Perhaps. Yeah, probably. And on the screen below me that I can see and you cannot... Kyler Barnett! Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Absolutely! So, you sounded, damn it. Real, was, you sounded real Barack podcast. Obama there for a second. <laughs> oh, this was the Pay Blue Podcast. I knew it. I knew it. You'd have a killer <laughs> Barack. I, I, I feel, I'm pretty sure I've heard that from you before. Go to Twitter. Follow up Penny Bloom Pod. Go to Instagram. Follow up Penny Bloom Podcast. It's a simple process. Go to the internet. Click follow. Go to Obamacare.com. Go to Apple Podcasts. <laughs> Uh, w, 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 dot. Leave a rate and review. Leave a rate and review. Download the episodes. But yeah. Do everything I just said in Barack Obama's voice. And remember, peace, love, and bloom. And always praise Keanu Reeves. That was tough. How can I look at some sexy lizards? Snapchat. Since, you know, he's sex. A, since he's a lizard man. Yes, you're Joe. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg Yo, Joe, you had a very quick without sex. Yes. Sexy lizards.
for Steve me, Steve Jobs probably was a hippie because of sex. So that's the, why he did acid a lot. And then he was like, mm, Apple, boom. That's why you have Apple. Steve Jobs was an asshole. Don't believe the propaganda. I uh, yeah, uh, great dude. <laughs> Uh, sex, actually, though. thinking sex. of thinking of you know cultural icons, uh, Joseph, how do you feel about uh about Elon Elon Musk rat? He's got a lot of babies. It means he's having lots of sex with different women. He has. That's not what I was. That's, how about his appearance on SNL? I know you watch. That's not what I was talking. Quite what I was talking about. I was more talking about the recent stuff. But I mean, go sure, whatever. He made Dogecoin tank that motherfucker. Hey, he's. I was gonna be rich. He's, He's a man. He of also chaos. made it skyrocket. He's a man of chaos, man. He started that as a joke. It turned out to work, and he's like, D- "You guys, he didn't this, start like, it. He you know, just like, hopped I on take, the wave. He, he didn't, didn't realize. I, I, give, I think he realized the power he had. Yeah. Like he realized the power he had. He's like, holy shit! Like I could, I could just tell all of my followers. He sold buy all this stock coin Friday like, night. He sold yeah. all his oh, Dogecoin Friday night. And guaranteed. that's why the price tank. Tanked the shit no, that's bought a, it no, again. No. All of his shares. Him selling Bonk. it would have fucking tanked it enough. <laughs> yeah. True. Elon fucking, gives – and Elon also takes shares. away. What Elon oh giveth, God. Elon taketh. Taketh away. <laughs> Yo, Elon we, I just want to say us, man. I'm going to go back on the Kanye references. We missed a golden opportunity when Joseph was talking about Mark Zuckerberg not being here without sex. The fucking Kanye line. None of us would be here without cum. 